Buongiorno, buongiorno e good morning. Jack's been studio live number 20. We're live three times a week on Twitch. Working on a sailing game simulation uh, prototype. So um, it was a very productive weekend. Actually, it doesn't feel like Monday at all. I feel like I'm just in the middle of a very busy and uh, hard week. Um, but this weekend, um, probably you already seen it if you if you follow me on Facebook or on YouTube. But you know, the, the big news is that um, I have something that's starting to look like like water. Um, Aural sucks. Thank you very much for the follow. So yeah, I, I have something that starts to look a little bit more like uh, like an ocean, um, well, like water, like sea, and. Um, so um, let, let's see what what you can do first of all um, so i can i can um, have a very calm sea right or i can make it you know very much like this right and uh, the nice thing is that the boat is uh, following this with the physics so we can see that the boat is following our waves and if i get rid of these waves um, whoops right that the boat is sort of reacting as you would expect from uh, from that so um very happy about it for the uh, the way that the water render uh, works and right now we have basically an infinite um, water plane so it doesn't matter well m the speed of my camera is not really that fast but what is g is going to happen is that we're never going to reach a point where this uh, water we run out of water um, um, so that that's cool um, the implementation of this water is basically um, coming from ideas taken from uh, a GPU gems article that is available on the N NVIDIA website calling rendering uh, realistic water or something like that together with uh, um, something called Shader Toy which is um, a very cool website where, where people put uh, amazing creations of shaders. And it's interesting because the, the shader toy is not really something that you can directly use um, because it's working all in screen space. So it's using ray marching to calculate the, the result, which is amazing. But they had some very cool ideas about um, how to uh, calculate um, waves that are actually sort of working on on modifying the 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 x and z position of of the vertex that you're looking at. Well, in that case, is the pixel, um, and it's something that I really didn't want to do um, in this game. Um, I also should say that. Um, my plan for the weekend was actually to have a look at some available solution for ocean rendering, for sea rendering. Um, I started to look at one solution, and the, although the, the, the final result is like miles better than this, um, the implementation is not really something that... that mm, it, it, I like the idea with my solution that I have full control, a full understanding of what I'm doing, uh, because eventually what I want to be able to do in the future is to be able to render, uh, for example, different zones of the scenario with different winds level, um, because it's such an essential part of racing, uh, of, of sailing, um, the ability to actually read the water and understand where you have uh, 
you have a pressure where you don't have pressure, where you have a, the wind that is slightly going in a different direction and you just, you know, get a tactical decision to go in that direction or not. And, and also I really have very strong physical requirements. Uh, Palaco Negro, thank you for the, for the, for the follow. Um, I also have very, um, unique physical requirements uh for the physics because i want to run the physics at fairly high uh rate because right now i'm running 200 hertz physics which probably for both is not really necessary but it's something that i can change easily and um, um, if that becomes complicated i can i can bring it down i mean Boats are not like cars. They don't have stiff springs. They don't have things like that. So they don't particularly require um, a big amount, a, a high refresh rate on the physics uh, for for the simulator to be stable. But you still want the the boat to to pass over the the waves in a, in a in a realistic manner. So uh, by by compressing the physical step, you you're reducing the amount of space that the boat will travel in one step. So it will copy whatever surface uh, is going on much better than having a simulation that uh, runs a lower earth. And because of the way I'm doing the buoyancy of, of the boat using a lot of points and, and I'm going to try, this is, this is going to be really for me the one of the places where I'm going to push as much as possible. So the idea to have as many triangles and vertices as possible um, in the hull in order to have a, a, a buoyancy that is as good as possible. So it's very important that querying the, 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 the water levels in order to understand if a triangle is underwater or over the water, the performance of that part is essential. So all these packages that rely on GPU uh, to calculate the result of the ocean are pretty complicated for me to use because there is always a delay between uh, passing data, uh, querying data on a CP on a GPU and getting back available on the CPU. So I don't really know how that will work. Uh, with with a super fast loop where I have like basically five milliseconds um, in order to calculate the entire physics of the boat, um, which you know the 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 collision I don't have I don't have right now any profiling built um, in in the system, so I don't really know how much it takes. But I would say that it's probably a Dominic morning. Um, it's probably something like 80%, 80% of the, the calculation is really figuring out uh, what is above water, what is below water. Uh, and that's going to be the, the, the challenge, um, really, to, to get that, that to, to work as fast as possible. So, yeah, having the possibility to control and have full access and understanding of the formula that generates this water. And so I can replicate exactly the same formulas on the GPU with the shader and on the uh, Rust side for the physics. Um, that's something that just make me feel more comfortable um, going in the future. Instead of trying to go for a, a third part party package that you know 3d 3d packages that you have to integrate in your in, in your own engine are never straightforward right there is always you know something that you need to that you need to understand that figure out how they work how you're going to in, implement those and integrate those inside your rendering um, application um, and then you end up after all this work, you end up with a black box, right? Which you don't really know and understand how it works. And if I want to do something that that blocks, uh, back black box doesn't support, then I'm screwed, I can't do it. If I want to have, uh, if that black box doesn't support the possibility to have 
uh, areas where the wind is in a different direction, so the water surface will have a different wave pattern. If it doesn't support it, then you cannot do it in the game, right? Um, while doing it myself, I know already where I'm going, so um, I'm building that into into the system. Um, one more, one last thing is that, uh, of course, this this is the result of a couple of days of work, um, and is in no way comparable right with the with the with the big games that you see out there and it would be ridiculous if it was right if i could come up in <laughs> two days with a solution that really rivals uh you know games like like assassin creed or or co thieves uh atlas or whatever you want uh well that wouldn't really say many good things about those guys of course if you know about these things uh, you really know where to look uh, to see how this is a, a hugely simplified solution compared to what those guys are doing right as on, on the rendering but again i have a i have a very specific physical requirements for for this game that they don't particularly have uh, maybe they're, they, they're happy to have, uh, you know, an entire pirate ship floating on, on two or three collision spheres of, over the water. And that's fine for what they're doing because the, the way the boat moves is not the game. The, the, there's uh, an entire game built around that, 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 that element. That's just an element. And the visual impact... Um, Claude, thank you very much for the for the follow. And the visual impact is way more important that that whatever accuracy you 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 want to have in the boat. In a game like this, the accuracy of the movement of the boat is the entire point. You know that's why you would play something like this, right? It's not to go around killing pirates or things like that so it's the entire point the entire point is that you want to play something that is an accurate simulation well accurate as accurate as i can possibly make it but that's going to be the selling point of the game um having said that to be honest with you uh this is something that i would be totally happy to ship the game with i mean right here what you see um, what you see right now, it's it's good enough. I mean, it's it's already more than I was expecting uh, to achieve, and the fact that I got that result uh, that quickly, it's it's a very good news because first of all, well, it it has two implications. The first implication is that I can go on and use my time to implement something else. Right, which is good because it will make the, the game better. Um, and the other implication is that I can keep working on this and, and study it and, and make it better. Uh, there are lots of things that could be done better. I mean, you, especially if you get very far, although I wouldn't know why you, you would want to have this kind of view um, so, so far, uh, you can see a wave pattern in here that I would like to avoid um, to have. Um, so uh, the, the system is right now using um, a series of 16 um, modified sinusoidal surfaces um, that, that combine together in order to create this. Plus it's got uh, I don't remember the number, I think nine or 12, I don't remember, um, high detail um, modification that are done on the normals. Let me find the sun so you can see, here we go. So you can see what what is it doing. So I'm, I'm increasing the, the waves level. So you can see on the details what it's doing. Um, and, and this, high detail is actually the normal map uh, doing this work um, while over here is geometric right 
um, you can also notice um, already implemented, it's very obvious here, you, you can see a, an obvious change here between here and here. And this is a, a switch of resolution between the this tile that is using a high subdivision uh, object. This is, I think, a tile of 150 meters with a resolution of 240 by 240 points. Um, and going here is basically the, the resolution half down to 120. And that's one of the reasons why you see that, plus also the detail uh, shadow, uh, the detail normal map calculation fades out. Um, so you lose those details because this will generate even more uh, repetition. There is a super simple crest, uh, although if you look near, I was, you know, my wife was, was telling me it looks more like sand than, <laughs> than, uh, than a crest. So yeah, I mean, there is a lot of places where this thing could be improved. But, you know, the, the nice part is that it's all working. So if you are in the boat, uh, the boat is going over the, the, the waves as you expect. Um, I, it, I have a bug in the physics where sometimes it just uh, get uh, some division by zero. So you might see the screen going black. And I also have this thing where right now with this catamaran, it can get super fast because it's basically jumping over the water. Um, as you can see right now, uh, we're going incredibly fast because it's just uh, planning over the water, which uh, I don't know. <laughs> it could be correct. Uh, we will never know until I have a, a proper big boat um, to put to put inside and see how it behaves. So it, it could be totally possible that because this thing is just bumping over the water, that this will be like this. And we're probably not paying enough price for nose dive into into the water right now. So right now I'm not even foiling. Um, I can go up in the foil and get even slightly more stable, but I'm still hitting the water. Um, hello, Josh, bro. So, uh, cool. and then uh, I can I can bring the sea down and everything comes down and, and the ride is much more uh, yeah, flat and, 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 and easy. Thank you, Yaku, Yachu YT. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, what it is right now. Uh, I also have this change of color in the in the ocean as it gets more um, wavy, which is a little bit overdone. Um, but just experimenting that it works. It also looks weird because usually when you have uh, this amount of waves, uh, the sky will not be <laughs> super clear and clean like this. So. It, it will be a combination between the fact that the reflection of the sky is not as strong and the fact that um, as it as is happening right now, what is happening right now is that as the, the, the sea gets more wavy, the amount of reflections go down because the, the how you say, that the water is, is more uh, rough, right? So... Uh, all the reflections vector are all scattered all the way around. So, and there is there are more waves that are actually pointing in a different direction and they're not pointing up. So you don't get that reflection from the sky. So you go from, you know, Caribbean, you know, Philippines, Palawan, <laughs> Boracay, um, kind of water, to, yeah, more like. England, Brighton kind of water. And and there is also, well, it's more complicated than that. It's also to do a lot with the angle of the sun and so on. So again, um, is nowhere, is nowhere uh, comparable to, to the big guys, but it's something that, to be honest with you, if I had to release this tomorrow and the water would look like this, I would be okay. 
you know, I would be happy. When I was thinking about this game, the water rendering was the thing that scared me the most. You know, I was always saying, all right, okay, I'm sure I can do the physics. I'm, I'm sure I can do... I sh I'm sure I can render the boat. I mean, probably a boat with fiberglass is one of the easiest thing to render as far as uh, 3D graphics is concerned. Um, and a boat like this is mostly fiberglass, so easy. But the ocean rendering was always scary. me. And to be in this situation after two days, it's, uh, yeah, it makes me feel really, really happy. Uh, you know, your games are never done. You, you, you never finish with a game, really. It, it, games are done when you're making games professionally. Games are done when, when marketing says it's time to move on, right? When marketing says, all right, the amount of money I'm making, uh, keep selling this game or keeping releasing DLC um, is not enough money to, to allow me to keep working on this game. Plus, if I keep working on this game, um, without developing a new technology, it, I could be making a profit now, but in a couple of years, I will be in a situation where the profit from this game will be even lower and I will have no new technology and game to be available at that point. And then, you know, you will be screwed, right? You, you, so it's always a difficult marketing decision to say, okay, we're done with this. Let's move on to the next, um, to next game. So I hope that answer your questions. Um, well, let me tell you what's the plan for this week. Um, lots of talking today, but, um, the plan for this week, my original plan for this week, and then I had a shower and maybe I'm rethinking the plan. Uh, my original plan was really to do a week all dedicated to graphics, which is something that, as you've seen with the, with the water shader, already started um, during the weekend. Um, and the reason for this is really, yeah, we go back to marketing. It's really the desire to, to be able to um, have something that looks a little bit better when when I post something on social media. Um, so the, the what is the problem? The problem is, um, of course, as a programmer, I know um, that that a game can actually improve the the look uh, by having better models, more details and we're just adding stuff that the engine doesn't have at this stage because we started with an engine that had literally nothing, just, you know, not even basic diffusion light, didn't have shadows, didn't have anything, uh, only one month and a half ago. Um, so I know that those things are things that I already implemented. I know how to do them. I know that, okay, they will come. Okay, I know that. The problem is that when I, when I put this stuff uh, in, on social media, which is the only marketing uh, vehicle that, that I have, um, it's very important in order to hope to grab the attention of, of people to show something that looks reasonably good. Right. That if, if, if you might have the, the best gameplay you want, but if you show up with a, with a screenshot that is sad and dark and, and it looks like, you know, a game from 20 years ago, it's very unlikely that anybody will click on, on your video or on your thing and, and get interested in what you're doing, especially in this stage where you cannot even, um, you cannot even, um, uh, play the game so all you can do is literally watch videos right and, and try to pick whatever is in my head um, that 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 could be you know what what this could become right um, so that's the main reason why I want to do this work and 
Actually, last evening I was watching a very interesting presentation on DXR, and I just love, completely love, the, how easy, how easy it is to do stuff with ray tracing, and ray tracing is is a big it, it is a big thing, right? We and and the, the, we know that eventually we'll we'll get there. Um, when we're gonna get there? is still a question that needs to be answered. Um, but the simplicity of doing things that are incredibly complicated in, in, in with raster like shadows or global illumination, the conceptual is not just the amount of code that you write in a ray tracer, which is, I don't know, what is it? Five lines of code to have soft shadows with contact shadows, which, you know, are incredibly hard to do in, in in raster and always and never look right in every situation and in ray tracing they're just almost almost obvious completely obvious right um of course yeah uh, going full in with 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 ray tracing is not really a good idea because you're limiting your market to the people that are well, that, that's the problem, right? You, you, you are trying to do something, the borrow checker comes in and tells you that your code is not good, you know that the code is good, you get angry, you really want that thing to work because that's where your focus is, and the borrow checker completely disrupts your, your, your productivity at their point and your mood. So, right, um, that's, that's a problem with Rust. Now, I also have to say that last time that I had a problem with the borrow checker was probably three or four weeks ago, right? So this has been one, one thing happening in like three weeks and four weeks, which is not bad. And, and also the trend is not bad. So the, the, the ability that I have to predict when I'm writing code that the borrow checker will not be happy about is definitely a positive trend. So I think um, that says a lot about Rust. You know, Rust is a kind of language that you need to keep using. Don't give up on it. And, and you get angry, I understand, but you know, it, it's, all for, <laughs> it's all for the greater good. You look at this code and you think this is totally fine which is what I was thinking last Friday. The problem is last Friday, what I did was because I have a function that does basically this. So focus both. What I was doing was calling self get focus both, right? So get focus both is exactly the same code that we have here. Exactly the same. It's exactly the same code. It returns an option to a reference to a boat avatar. And the way it takes it is exactly the same, right? Now, if I try to compile this code, so with this focus boat, if I try to compile this, bang, it doesn't work. It, I get the error that I was getting the other day. So what's happening here? What is happening is that the borrow checker logic is not really reaching into this function to understand what I'm really returning. It doesn't understand that I'm really returning just an element of these both avatars vector, right? All he, all he sees, I think, I, you know, I'm not a compiler programmer I, I, I don't claim to understand what the hell is going on with the Rust compiler, but what I think is going on is that is not really figuring out, it's only seeing, oh, this this thing is returning a reference, right? And and in order to be called, it it gets called on a reference on self, right? So I think that the border checker is thinking that this focus boat is related to self. It doesn't really 
go inside and understand, okay, which part of self you're really referencing to. So it's saying, right, okay, I don't know which part of self you're referencing to. I know you're returning a reference, so it must be something in self. So it's, it's sort of take the entire, um, the entire self as a reference. He thinks that I'm borrowing the entire self as a reference, right? So when I get here, because I'm trying now to borrow another part of self as mutable, it goes like, no, you can't do that, right? So, so that's good. I, it doesn't require me to do any cloning um, of the information, which was what I was doing uh, last Friday, and if you remember, I was extremely unhappy about it all. Right, okay, so let's move on to what we are going to do today, which is, uh, let's start with fog. So, um, fog is not just, you know, for the typical use that you might have of fog, which is, uh, the fog as, as we <laughs> identify what we call for fog. Um, fog can also be used um, just to, to have, you know, the light, the super light hint of, of very light fog. I don't know how, even how to say that in English, um, which is very important in giving you a hint of how distant um, objects are. Right. So in, in, in the case of our um, of our game, actually, um, you see these mountains there. This is a, this is actually these are actually three D objects, but there is absolutely no information in this scene that is telling us how far they are. Right? It, they they could be literally. It could be a texture, right? That is right there instead of being an object that is actually uh, very far. And so that worked. Um, let's see the result. We should get a scary red fog. A 200 meter. All right. Um, yeah. It looks weird because we don't have the fog on the water shader, right? So we only have it for the rest of the shit. Okay, that looks more like fog now. Okay. When things like this happen. And I was always saying, well, you know what, if we are one month from the release and we have a, a bug list of zero and we wake up in the morning and we have nothing to do, that's the perfect time to <laughs> implement something like that. Until then, you know, just go for the easiest solution that stays within the boundary of your game. All right, so this is what we had before and it all looks completely flat. You had no clue of what's the shape of this thing. And you have no clue that this guy, where is it? Yeah, you had no clue that there was this thing that was more near than this thing, and this guy is pretty far. Also here, you hardly noticed that there was something. It just looked like one single object. While with the New beautiful feature of the fog. Now those objects are obvious, their relationship with the distance. There you go, look at that. That's so obvious. Cool, cool, cool. So, did it. All right, so, fake GI. What's the problem with the fake GI right now? So the fake GI All right, that's our ambient term. Which is surprisingly wrong. All right, 
let's let's say that we go with this let's see how it looks Difficult to see, but yeah. it's so obvious. Here's to see the difference between with and without this trick. So this is without. You can see that the shape, this is in the sun. If we go in the shot, you see that the shape of the, of the boat is totally gone. There is no way to tell that there are curves here. It might be flat. It's very difficult to see this curve. I know it's there. The textures are hinting that there is a curve there, but the colors are exactly the same. Let, let's re-enable the GI. GI, I call it GI. Oh, it's a fucking trick. It's a cheap trick. But if you have a skybox or a cube map where you can grab your things, you know, this is... Uh, a super cheap way to get a much better image. Right, so this is with and without. <laughs> I didn't really, they're not really that comparable, but yeah, you can see, you can see all the detail of the boat here and down here. And down here, and down here, and here. And here you cannot see it. It's all gone. It's all flat. Right. And, and you can also see that the entire thing is basically going into the blue. It's got this blue tint um, character to it. Anywho, what's next? <laughs> Ah, that is cool. Sun ambient color variation. Okay. <coughs> anyway, um, so what's the idea here? The idea is that if we, uh, if I move the sun, where is our sun? Sun, where are you? Shit. Where is the sun? Where the hell is the sun? Is it behind here? Right, okay, so that's the sun. Right. If I move the sun, up and down, right? The colors remain the same, right? The shadows are moving. Everything gets brighter, of course, because we get more sun coming down. But as the sun goes there, you would imagine things to move into, into red, up everything to go back to blue. I really don't know why that thing is yellow now. Oh, shit. Why it's yellow. Might be correct, actually. Might be correct. Anywho. All right. Uh, so we have to do this. We have to do that. There is a set of colors associated to to this thing. You add uh, so much better. Some DIY. An ambient level curve. Actually, uh, I don't. Uh, I think th uh, this is this is going to be interesting now because my loot curve doesn't support. It's it just supports floating point. So let's see if I can make it generic. Thirty two to that. Well, you know what? It was it was a nice try. It was a nice try. It was a nice try, but there are times in life when you need to let it go. I don't know, my I have to say right now the language that I probably prefer uh 
444M. Thank you for the follow. The language that I probably prefer, and I would really lo love to use it for this instead of Rust, uh, is Zig. Zig is, it's almost a language. I mean, it's even better of how I would do a language. It's like, it's got some element to it that is just pure genius. I think Andrew is a, is a genius. He's a total genius. And I think, and I think, I don't know, the direction that C++ is going is getting more and more crazy. I mean, they should take stuff out of the freaking language instead of putting stuff in. They keep putting stuff in and it's getting... It's got so many things that don't make sense. Pointer, references, it's like... Terrible, terrible language. And after this experience with Rust, I really cannot see myself going back to C++. I will just kill myself. And start thinking, oh, look at that. Should we do it like this? Sweetie. Sweetie? That looks so cool. Yeah. Right? Oh, I should totally do an alternative sailing games. I feel like a proper game designer coming up with artistic stuff and my 97,000 triangle helm. <laughs> Look at this, it's beautiful. And actually, I would like you to notice how the, the ocean is actually reacting to the color of the sky. I have to say I'm pretty pleased. What do you think guys? Should we release like this? You know, fuck realism. This looks so cool. Yes, it does. It does match the unicorn team <laughs> totally. I think I should do something that if you choose the own, you, the unicorn skin, that's how you will see the the world. <laughs> because, <laughs> because that's that's it, right? If if you choose the unicorn, that's how you see the world. That's correct. That's totally. You know. That's super high simulation value right there totally totally i'm i'm totally having a you know a vision here it's beautiful it's poetic we're doing 42 notes on this beautiful magenta right guys i think that's enough for today uh, thank you very much for coming by and stopping by and uh, watching this if you watch on youtube you can follow these streams live on twitch three times a week next stream for me is going to be next wednesday at 10 a.m uh, central european time see you there guys bye bye ciao Andrea, you like it? That's what happens when you live in the Netherlands, right? That's what you get when you live in the Netherlands. <laughs>